And yes, you're going to get a black eye. Yes, you're going to get a bloody lip. Yeah, you're going to get a sucker punch to the gut that's going to knock you on your keister. And yet, we have to be reminded we're not alone. This is Small Business Celebration. Welcome, where we're celebrating small businesses for big breakthroughs. Visioneers, this is episode 250 here on Small Business Celebration, and we have got, I think, the most interesting guest I know. Me! <laughs> <laughs> and in order to grill me, we've got two fantastic, they both on the show. Kevin, you've been on the show. Kevin Oliver, you've been on the show for how, how long? How many I, times? Well, I think I was originally episode number 60, I think, right. and then in the 90s somewhere. Somewhere. Of a group of three people. Can we, when, do we know what that is? Ooh, no. we'll leave that out so you can find out on social media. See if you can figure <laughs> that out. And then our other host is Lizette Patterson, for which we're in your office. Yes, we are. Yeah. You are enjoying my beautiful office. He just had some tequila, enjoyed that too. Yeah. <laughs> I am perfectly fine. I have, I am. Yeah. But this is, this is remarkable. We've been here, it's 250 episodes. Yeah. Can you believe that? You know, I never expected this to happen. Well, the, the question, I mean, the huge question is, and yeah. I think Lisette brought this up earlier. Why are you playing so hard to get? <laughs> you just shut my eye. <laughs> Wow. Uh, wow, Jess, right off the bus. Right, right under the bus. It's right under come, the bus. That was great if it comes from you instead of me. Like, gosh, why are you playing so hard to get? Well, you, it's a you great know, question. because one of the things that we do on this show, mm. part of the reason I like to think we have this success, is because. Our guests have to have been in business for at least five years. And the reason for that, and, and I learned this about mid-season two when I was doing the show, is that if you haven't gotten one of those various curious letters from the California State Franchise Tax Board, oh, you don't know. Right. If you haven't gone through and you haven't fired your first client, mm. you don't get it. If you haven't had to let a uh, an employee go, you don't get it. And if you haven't had those experiences, then how are you going to legitimately give advice and life stories to, to vision your nation unless you've had that kind of experience? And you, Lizette, you have taken about 15 years worth of life experience and condensed it into four. Yeah, I had all of that within my first six months. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. You know, and so we do make exceptions, but by and large, most business owners don't get that till year five, year six, sometimes longer than that, depending on their their arc of the growth of their business. So yes, uh, you, when I initially met you, oh, she's only been on for you know and been in business for four years, but that's just a regular trigger for me. But no, you once once Kevin went through and said, Michael. I had to my, have my friends step in to help me well, get and that's an episode, the thing. I, right. a date. I'm telling you, a date. <laughs> okay, you're playing hard to get. I'm telling you. Hey, my like, yeah. <laughs> Well, but that's something else, too, that, that is when you own a business, you can't get anywhere by yourself. No. It's, it, a lot of times in business and as CEOs, I mean, we're all CEOs of our own, in our own right, in our own realm, there is no I in team. I mean, that's an old saying, and that is so true in any business, whether you're in real estate, whether you're in, you know, the uh, recruiting business, you know, things like that, or even in the podcast business. Right. And it's, it is it is a team effort. Can I push back on that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's episode 250. I can do this. <laughs> there is an I in team. Okay. Okay. The analogy I like to use is American football. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have 11 players on each side of the ball and every successful football team has those one or two or three people that say there's three seconds left in the game, the score is tied, we're down by three, we're down by six. Give me the ball. I want to be the one holding the ball so that I can help the team win. 
So, yes. There can there, be, there, a, there should be a leader in the pack at that certain moment. There is right. a leader. You right. always have your star people. I mean, even in my business in right. real estate, we have probably, there's an 80, 80 20 rule. There's 20% right. of our realtors that do 80% of the business. Right. Right. And you will have your stars that come out there that do, and they say, give me the ball, coach, let me run. Right. Um, or, or, you know, in baseball, I'm a baseball guy. You right. know, we get out there and say, coach, put me up to bat. Right. And absolutely, but it's still a team effort. Right. You still have to. But you yeah. also can't discount the people that want to succeed. They want to win. And what can I do to help the team win? Yes. And I think that gets lost because sometimes people hide behind, the, oh, there's no I in team. So I can be a wallflower. Mm -hmm. And as long as I'm supporting everybody, everything is kosher. Everything is fine. And no, sometimes mm -hmm. those are the boat anchors in your business. Yes. That's why I always say when you're pointing a finger out, even when I say, well, they're doing it because we're a team, there's always right. three fingers pointing back at you, right? Right. But, but what are you there doing you to help out the team? Nobody likes a boat anchor. Who helped you get to where you're at? For those who don't know, Small Business Celebration started off as an advanced level Toastmasters project. And Toastmasters is a nonprofit organization that helps people with their public speaking skills. The, the old adage is if you're at a funeral, more people would like to be in the casket than talking about the person in the casket. Yes. And when I did this advanced level project, the project was do a podcast. And this was back, they've changed the rules since because people have discovered it's a lot more work and expense to actually do it. But when I was there, there was a gentleman named Louis Varga and he says, you know, Michael, and Louis Varga is the vice president of Colombo Construction, great friend. And he goes through and he says, Michael, why'd you do your project on business owners? I'm like, Louis, I don't know anybody. I, I don't know any business owners. He says, Michael, you, you can do this because I'm a lighting designer, lighting director. I don't, I don't know business owners. And he said, I think it'd be great. So I sat down and I made a list of all five business owners I knew. All five of them. And I'm a slight perfectionist. Slight. And, and I went and I interviewed all five, picked the best one, presented it to the club. And the club went, great, this is wonderful, you're fantastic. And I thought I was done. Wash my hands, walk away. Yeah. And after the project was done, Lewis comes up to me and says, you know, Michael, you can take each of those episodes, post them, and allow them to roll out a week apart all by themselves. Really? Who's going to listen? <laughs> Who's going to care? You know? And he said, just, just do it. It'll be great. OK, so I went ahead and posted it. And then about seven weeks later, I started getting some very angry emails. People wanted more episodes. And so you got to go through and figure out, okay, what am I going to do? And I kind of flounder around a bit and find a few more guests. And then next thing I know, well, maybe I can get some sponsors. And so starting episode eight, we were profitable, which I kind of think is important for a business podcast, yes. <laughs> a business show. Because <laughs> if you're not a profitable show, how can you give advice on how to be Profitable, you know? Exactly. You're <laughs> yeah. not a profitable business. <laughs> right, exactly. Yes. Now, I, I, will, I, I will freely admit that when we first started, was it enough for me to live on? No, it wasn't a lot enough to live on. But, you know, it's one of those you go through to the accounting, and when you add up the expenses and, and the losses, or, you know, expenses and profits, the, the bottom number is no longer red. You're profitable. So it took us a while to get to the point where we could you know, live on it and that sort of thing. But, you know, we got there yeah. and we, we grew and, and we started developing the business. So I hope that answers the yeah, question. Somebody, yeah, somebody it, believed in you and gave you that initial mm, idea. Right. And then you just, you went and ran with it and right. created right. 250 episodes. Yeah. It, it sounds like in your business that, and in any good business, we have mentors we in do. our life. We have right. coaches, things like that. Tell me a little bit about possibly in regards to what you've had in your business and how you got to where you are now. When COVID came, we made the bridge to YouTube. And people, visionaries have been asking me because they wanted to see the guests. They wanted to see the business. And it was kind of dragging my feet on that. and. I finally made the bridge to do that, but one of the people that radically changed the show was Morgan Clayton. He's the mm -hmm. owner of Teltech, and, and he's a he's a fantastic guy. Love him. 
And he's one that reminded me that business owners do business with people they know, they like, and they trust. And it totally changed the format of the show. Because once we understood that if you as a visioneer are listening or watching the show and you like the guest, you're willing to listen to what it is that they have to offer, what it is that they have to say. And if we remind Visioner Nation of this process over and over and over again, we just don't come out with a sledgehammer and say, <laughs> bang on the head. But we come in and say, by the way, people do business with people they know, they like, they make- and they trust. Then I'm going through and I'm helping Visioner Nation grow because the whole point, I don't expect anybody who's watching this episode to remember everything. But I do ask them to learn something, get a nugget of that one little thing that can help just tweak their business. Because most of us learn as we grow our businesses that it's all about the little tweaks. We talk about the breakthroughs, but a lot of them are, are results of all the changes, the little tweaks, and then something big happens and away we go. And that's what we try to do with the show is to remind people it's all about the little tweaks and learning along the now, way. Now you're mentioning your tweaks and things yeah. like that, and we all have them in our businesses, right. you know, on, on how to change something, how to market something different, or how to, you know, make something different within the process. Right. You mentioned these tweaks. Tell us about some of your tweaks. <laughs> I am not a tweaker. <laughs> Um, you, just, you just aged yourself. You, you just aged yourself by saying tweaker. Yeah. <laughs> well, back in 1947. <laughs> no, you know, we, we did do that. We went through, and there's a lot of little tweaks that went a lot of ways. And a lot of it, I have to give Visioner, Cre- Visioner Nation credit for this. Because we get all of our questions from our audience. We call them Visioner Nation. We call them Visioneers. And without them actually giving us the feedback, we would have no idea. And as the show's developed and grown, the visioneer questions have really formed how we've shifted and how we've changed, you know. And both of you being former guests, you've been victims of this. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, because the real question times more than you once. You mean we're not perfect? <laughs> but but that's the whole thing is they're they're real questions from real business owners. Right. And as the show has evolved and we've had visioneers that have been with us for five seasons going into season six now, they're as they've grown, as they've matured, so has their questions. And and I'll tell you, each one of you got a doozy. Oh, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, thank you. Who am I going to throw under the bus? <laughs> but that's the gem of it. That's the beauty because these are real business owners asking real questions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's what makes this thing special. I'm not smart enough to figure this out on my So own. this brings me to my visionary question for okay. you. Okay. <laughs> the visionary question is courtesy of Mike Saba. A Zillow Premier agent. Wait, I know him. With Watson you do? Realty. I do. You do. No way. Are you guys a rock star? Can you give me a second and let me see who is <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> He's selling, another realtor. Selling Bakersfield homes since 1992, maybe he longer than Kevin. He sells a lot of them. <laughs> he might be selling longer than Kevin. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think give, he has. Give Mike <laughs> Saba a call at 661-203-8406 or reach him at Mike Saba one at iCloud.com today. And if he doesn't call you, call me and I will make sure he calls you. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't trust that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my question for you is, sure. Visionary Dave from Visalia, California. By the way, my parents are from Visalia. What have you learned from your guests on small business celebration? Great question. Mm, great question. It just comes through a lot of repetitive things. And I was, I was listening to a visioneer a couple of days ago who was talking about, you know, I've heard this from like four different guests on your show about this or that or the other thing. And I just finally got it. And I think there's a lot of that that happens with the show. You, 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 you start seeing trends. This is what successful business owners do. This is how they interact. This is the way they do things. I've also learned what not to do. 
And one of the things that I've also learned, and, and sometimes when it comes to editing the show, because we do edit the show for time and content and some of the bloviation and pontification that sometimes happens with us. <laughs> <laughs> I think because one more so, I think more so than others. I, 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 I did really good. But this is one of those things where, when you're a business owner, you're the constant salesperson. You're always communicating. You're always talking to people. And a lot of business owners, when they go through, they forget or they don't realize how many of these filler words that they use. And they are the most knowledgeable, sophisticated, intellectual people you've mm -hmm. ever met in the world. Um, but when they think and um, they talk, um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh my gosh, give me a second here. <laughs> I'm a like, is he joking? I'm like, is he joking? Or is, he really, is he really doing it? But this all comes oh. out of communication. And this is something that I've learned what not to do. Don't step on that landmine because when business owners come onto the show, every one of them has a unique story. Mm -hmm. every, th every single business owner comes from a background that is rich. And yes, we've all seen our own movie. We've seen how this goes. We don't think it's interesting because we relive our movie every night. We pick <clears> on <throat> the things that we do wrong every day. We've seen our own movie, so we don't think it's special. And that's one of the things I enjoy about this show is we go through and we bring these stories out so that people realize, yeah, I'm not alone. You know, and I'm going through these struggles, I'm yeah. going through these problems, and yet, you know, if, if Lizette and Kevin can do it, and this buffoon who's bloviating every week can do it, what can I? Speaking about that, when I, what I have found as a, a, a newer business owner is sitting down with those business owners that have done it before me yeah. and really hearing them and they come back and they're like, oh, is that, that's, oh yeah, that happened back then and you're going to be fine. Right. So this is really good what you're doing because yeah. you give us that opportunity to see their stories. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and this isn't just for the new business owner. No. You'd be surprised on how many business owners that have been on the show or are fans, visioneers of the show. They have been in business 10, 15, 20 years. And when I ask what makes you wake up every morning and open your business, they get reminded themselves why. Yeah. We were just talking about that when we, we did your episode. Yes, I did. It was like, this was a great thing to be reminded. Yeah, we got kind of to do it for it's true. our children or for me. Right. Selfish reasons sometimes, you know, I will no longer depend on anybody. I will depend on myself. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the number one question I get asked off camera. But before we do that, hey, wait, this is when I get to do my own pitch. How people can get in touch with me. Wow. This is kind of weird. I've, I've never done this before. So if you like Small Business Celebration, go ahead and like, subscribe, and notify. If you want to go ahead and submit a visionary question, go ahead and reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. and Or check us out at smallbusinesscelebration.com. But before we run away, if I don't have our hosts do the same thing, I think they might shoot me. So was that you first? If visionaries want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? They could go ahead on LinkedIn, Facebook, on Instagram, uh, www.casadorconsultinggroup.com. Just look for me and you'll find me there. And of course, you can get a hold of me, Kevin Oliver, on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram as well, or at my website, yourhome661.com. Uh, and we'll talk about the most popular question I get asked off camera when we come right back. With the dark winter cold, rats and ants are being pushed into your home. Stay comfortable in your home with a call to Oxley Pest Control at 661-325-2687. The professionals at Oxley Pest Control can install door sweeps and traps, keep those little critters out, and protect your greatest asset. Call Oxley Pest Control at 661-325-2687 or visit them at oxleypest.com. That's O-X-L-E-Y-P-E-S-T.com now. Well, I want to welcome you back personally to Visioneer Nation with my friend. Lizette Patterson from Casador Consulting Group. And can we tell he's a diva because he started before me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. 
God, I can't believe you did that. You know, the problem with this is, is if we keep doing this, Visioneers are going to say, yeah, we need to do this as a regular yeah, format. Yeah. You know? We are here interviewing Michael Roberts, we not are. Kevin. It's Michael. It's the Michael Show today. Michael Show. <laughs> what? What? So, what did somebody tell me? So, this is episode 250. Thank you. And we have our special guest, Michael Roberts. Thank you. Thank you. He might do podcasts in town. You might know him. <clears throat> it takes it's a, takes you a lot to get a date with him. <laughs> on you? the calendar. No, on she doesn't calendar. hold a grudge. <laughs> 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 and by the way, if you're watching this on, on YouTube and not listening on the podcast, you're seeing a family on the screens behind me. It's not mine. In fact, we're not even in my office. We're in the office of Elizabeth Patterson. Yes, right. he is in the office of a staffing firm, which he gets to see all the craziness in my life. That's <laughs> why I have tequila. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys can see it, it's right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, so was that and I get to drill Michael today for your entertainment as well as your information. So Yay. I want to start off with, yep. I know a little bit about your background, oh, no. but... I do know you have a Hollywood connection. I do. And we want to know what that, our Visionaire Nation wants to right. know what that Hollywood connection is. You're going to have to def narrow that down a little bit. Because, oh. you know, I, I've been... Well, that is true. Because I've been a director of photography and lighting designer for like 15, almost 20 yes. years. Yes, well tell us through that real quick and how this brought you here. As I said, I, I started doing the show as an advanced level Toastmasters project, but I am one of those people that when I informed my parents that I was going to become a theater major, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the, the only saving grace on that was that I was going to be behind the scenes. Stage and, crew. And I was going to be crew, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and the adage I told my parents is that, you know, I'm going to be behind the camera, you know, backstage because the unemployment lines are shorter. <laughs> 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 and and I have to happen to be one of these people that went to university. I got my bachelor's degree at Cal State Fullerton, and I the day after graduation, I immediately went to work in the industry. And I've been one of those very few people that actually uses his degree even still to this day. Most people, even if they go out to university and they get a quote unquote normal degree, whether it's in business or sociology or underwater basket weaving. They never use it. They go into something else. And I am one of those very few people that, yeah, I, I actually do this stuff. So when I made the transition from a podcast to a YouTube channel, cameras, lights, microphones, all that, yeah, I, I already knew this stuff, yeah. you know. And yeah, it's different when you're in front of the camera. You know, I will admit that when I was in high school, I did play the Scarecrow. The whiz. We have a lot in common. It's okay. We did, yeah. Okay. But but I discovered, yeah, I, I was more of a behind the scenes kind of person. What has been what you what have you learned the most from one person? You don't have to say the name, but right. when you were interviewing someone for podcasts, who was that one person that stood out and why? We had one of the guests that I had early, earlier on. Um, he was one of the owners of Allied Potato. And during the second segment, he went through and he talked about how his uncle actively tried to put him out of business. And not in a good way, in a very vindictive way. And it made me realize that, yeah, I've got family squabbles and I've got family members that have been employees their entire life and they don't understand why we work so hard and why we do what we do. And that story just helped me realize that it's, it, there, there's hope for us all. You remind us that we are all humans. Yeah. People see us business owners sometimes as like that robot or, mm -hmm. you know, because of... <clears throat> tax write-offs, everything that, all the pretty and fluff that they see. Well, and it, you, it, it's a human. We're humans. You know, you and I have shared more than one bottle of wine. Yeah. As a, and and you, you have a good palate, <laughs> Mr. Well, sommelier. That helps. That's true. <laughs> As a sommelier, <laughs> I, 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 I enjoy wine, right. but I know you and I have had lots of conversations, and I know that both of us are history buffs. Right. And we love history. Right. What do you think is your main thing that has influenced you that has helped with your business? Just before COVID, my family and I went to Japan. And 
I have said on more than one occasion that Japan is probably the most American country outside of America in the world. And, and yet, they, and even though they have one of the most open and free economic cultures in the world, in addition to us, there are certain things that are simply not done in Japan, where the government doesn't allow you to do certain things. And I'm not getting on a political soapbox, but the point is, is that the opportunity we have here is special. Mm -hmm. It's truly special. And, and I don't take it for granted. This visionary question is courtesy of my dear friend and realtor. He's an awesome realtor, by the way, and I do have to say. Friendly competitor. He is a friendly competitor. Yeah. And I've actually worked with him before as on deals. I like this guy. Okay. And his name is Mike Saba. I can't. Ha! <laughs> Wow. Your friends. Wow. He's My a friend with Mike them. Saba. Sorry, Mike. A Zillow premier agent with Watson Realty. Born and raised, never left Bakersfield. Give Mike Saba a call at 661-203-8406 or reach him at MikeSaba1 at iCloud.com today. How do you like that? I love it. I love it. And I, th our... I think he'll approve. Yeah. <laughs> Better watch out. He might start having you do his I ads. know. I think I did a better job than you, you did. did. I did. You I looked did. a lot better doing <laughs> it. I, I do. You I did. did. Visioneer Heather from Bakersfield, California asks, we are at 250 episodes now. Yeah. You have a lot of people that you've interviewed. What direction do you see Visioneer Nation going? What's your vision? I was talking with Visioneer Dave Oxley, and yes, he's one of the sponsors on this show. And one of the reasons why he wanted to be a sponsor on the show is because he knows that we're always thinking two or three or four steps ahead. And this is something I learned from guests on Small Business Celebration. <laughs> you, 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 right, you, you like, can't, that's it. Exactly. You can't think of what's going to happen tomorrow. You have to think about what's happening next year and the year after and where you want to end up. And where we want to go is we're going to be growing where we want to go is we want to grow small business celebration up and down california and across the nation and eventually around the world and this is part of the reason why we take visioner questions from down south and up north is to let people know they're not alone and we we plan on continuing to grow because bakersfield has been wonderful to us because Bakersfield, the business owners here, they want to help. And they'll give you a free, unsolicited advice anytime you want it, whether you so like, you it, like or it or not. not. <laughs> <That's exactly. laughs> but, they're, but this is a great testing ground. This is a great place to beta test things. Because when you get outside of Bakersfield, it's not as forgiving. And this is a great community to learn, stumble, trip your foot on, stub your toe, get a bloody nose, and, and learn from your mistakes and grow. And so I have really appreciated that. And now as we continue to grow, yes, we'll still take you know, business owners from Bakersfield, but we're going to be integrating from Visalia <coughs> and down south and up north and across state lines as we continue to grow because our platform is growing. And the people that have come along and joined us, the visionary nation that has helped us develop and grow, they're maturing, they're learning, and they're developing. And so I'm really looking forward to what the future has in store. Fantastic. Who's going to be your first guest from out of state? <laughs> well, there's that one, oh, too, but that's, that's not right. the last question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, hold on. I'm going to go to the last question. Oh, let's go to that who, one. Who okay. Are you, do you already have a choice? I always welcome a warm handshake over a cold call any day. And so there are several in the pipeline that I'd like to, but I'm also more curious, yeah, who do we run into? Who do we meet? Who does Lizette and Kevin say, you know, Michael, you really need to talk to. Talk to this person. Because uh, I wonder how we had that one. I know. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> I know, right? So true, though. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael. <laughs> um, finally, what gets you up every morning and gets you wanting to do open the doors of your business? Hope. Hope. Being a business owner is a lonely business. 
We, we as business owners have to make decisions every day based on incomplete data and incomplete information that affects not only us, our employees, our family, their families, our customers, our community. And we do this knowing full well that the decisions we make are wrong. We know this, that if we decide something today, we're going to have to change it. And we have no idea what the future has in store. Yeah, we can go through and we can try to plan and we can try to figure out where we're going, what the roadmap is like. But at the end of the day, it's you. You're it. And it can be terrifying. And so what gets me out of bed and doing this show is talking with visioneers like yourselves and reminding Visioneer Nation they're not alone. They can develop. Yeah, we all have bad days. And yes, I am guilty of hoof and mouth disease in the <laughs> third degree. Boy, have I stepped in it. Have I done stupid things? I think all of us have. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> and yet, it's not the end of the world. And yes, you're going to get a black eye. Yes, you're going to get a bloody lip. Yeah, you're going to get a sucker punch to the gut that's going to knock you on your keister. And yet, we have to be reminded we're not alone. We need to pick up that phone. We need to call a trusted friend, a trusted mentor. Yeah, we need to get around like-minded individuals. Yeah, we need to get that show. We need to get that podcast. We need to get that book. We need to get around like-minded people. If anything, to build ourselves up mm -hmm. and remind ourselves, yeah, you can do this because within the first two years, you're almost certain to fail. Yep. And boy, this is hard. And we have to be reminded, no, you just got to grind. <clears throat> you just got to go. You just got to trust in people yeah. whether you want to or not. You are, and you are so right. I mean, in, in my business, there's an 87% failure rate. Yeah. I mean, a, a realtor could come into the business Nine, almost nine out of ten within five years are no longer in the business. Right. You've got to grind. You have to work on it. You have to be built. And like you said, and this was so powerful, it's relationships yes. over transactions. Yes. And that is so important. And I think that is in so many different businesses, not just real estate or in, in recru employment recruiting or, or even for Visioneer Nation, right. podcasts and stuff and, and, and YouTube. But, uh, but it is. It's all about relationships. And I think that's what leadership and, and, uh, is all about. A relationship gives you hope. Yes. There you go because you know there's people out there that give you hope every day. They got my back, they're there, and they're learning, and yeah. they're learning from them, and they're learning from you. So yeah, that's a good one, hope. There you go, Visioneer Nation. <laughs> and I'll be right back with my final thought. Hello, Visioneers. Sasha and I are here to talk about, we've got a new season of Small Business Celebration coming up, and we're looking for ad sponsors. Isn't that a great idea so we can grow and expand what we're doing for Visioneer Nation? Yeah, he thinks so too. So if you've got a business, you've got a service that you like to promote to Visioneer Nation, reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram today. On our way to our high school diploma. 250 episodes. Can you believe that? I mean, this is an advanced level Toastmasters project that's gone completely awry. And because we've had the success, there's a lot of people to thank as well. And hopefully I can remember them all. And I apologize if I've forgotten anybody. Firstly, you. 
Visionary Nation, because without you, without you tuning in every week, whether it's on YouTube or anywhere you listen to podcasts, we couldn't do this show without you. And because you keep sending us all these thoughts and ideas through our social media channels, and also those questions, those delightful questions that we ask our guests, it formulates the show and it helps the engagement. And we can't do this without you. And we sincerely thank you very much for doing it. Also, we want to thank our sponsors, both past and present. Our current ones like Dave Oxley and Mike Saba. Yeah, we financially can't do this without you. So thank you so very much. And all of our past sponsors who've kept the show afloat. Thank you so very much. And again, to the Uvisioner Nation who patronize these various sponsors of ours, that's why they keep coming back. So thank you again, Visioner Nation, for reaching out to them and making this program a success. I also want to thank my wife, Tamala. This show has hours and hours of editing, lots and lots of conversations with great guests on the show, and all of you visioneers who come up and greet us and talk to us in public, and Tamla takes all of this with the grace that I have seen in no other. Finally, I want to thank my parents. Obviously, I wouldn't be here without them, but also for their encouragement for doing this show. And one of the things that I will probably always remember for the rest of my life is something my dad said before he passed away about small business celebration. He said, Michael, when you do small business celebration successfully for four years, you will earn the equivalent of a bachelor's degree in business. You make it another two years after that, you'll get your master's and the year after that, yes, you will have your PhD in business. But keep your nose to the grindstone. Well, that part is me but he did say if you keep going for another four years after that you'll finally earn your high school diploma sounds like a lot of business owners doesn't it we just keep going keep going and after 10 years we'll finally get where we want to go we'll finally earn our high school diploma I hope you enjoyed this conversation this week here on our 250th episode of Small Business Celebration. And I hope you learned something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. And we'll see you here again next week when we celebrate another small business making a big breakthrough. By the way, why are there so few hot air balloon businesses? <laughs> you're, full, you're full of hot air, so you're empty. You're, you're empty. You're no, they just have a hard time taking off. Oh, god. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Michael. That one's a little. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. A little, uh, a little late. I need to kill it now. Uh, why oh, are yes. <laughs> why are dry erase board companies so interesting? Because they're a blank canvas. Oh, uh, close, close, close. <laughs> because they're quite remarkable. Oh, oh gosh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've gotten those jokes out of the way, now we can start. So